The ingredients that you're going to need for your pachauni are of course the pachauni or the insides of the goat. And we have some assorted pieces here. We're going to go over exactly what we have, but feel free to use whatever pieces that you and your family prefer. We also have a lot of culantro, also known as shadow benny. Auntie Chandra finds that it gives a great flavor to the pachauni and adds a nice freshness. We also have some garlic and some hot pepper. Now, as you guys can see, we have a lot of hot pepper and a lot of garlic. The reason is, is because since these are the organs of the animal, you need to make sure it's properly seasoned to cut all of that freshness or rankness that meat tends to have sometimes. We also have the classic curry seasonings. We have some curry powder, some masala, as well as some ground jeera. And we have some chopped scallions. And that's pretty much it. It's a very simple dish and it's going to come out really good. So we just wanted to go over all of the different assorted organs that we're going to use for our pachauni today. Right here, Auntie Chandra is holding up a piece of the lung. We also have some tripe, that's also known as the stomach. And we have some liver right here. We also have pieces of the heart. And we have a piece of the throat. And we also have some of the intestines. All of those little things with the holes that you see, those are the intestines right there. Now, I did not get to do a cleaning video for you guys on how you properly clean the pachauni, but I wanted to let you guys know that whenever you make pachauni, you have to properly boil the stomach, scrape the stomach, wash all the meats very well with salt, some vinegar, even some lime juice. And you want to make sure to chop them very fine so this way nothing is too big or too chunky in the pachauni. And as I said before, feel free to use whatever assorted pieces of organs that your family likes. I know some people, they'll just use the tripe as well as the intestines, but feel free to mix it up however which way you want. And I know guys, this doesn't sound too appetizing, but it tastes great to everyone. It's not my favorite dish, but it does taste pretty good. We had all of the organs already chopped and already cleaned really well and they were sitting in the freezer because we wanted to make it easy so, so we could just end up cooking them on the day of. However, when you take it out of the freezer, we recommend that you give them just a quick rinse once again with a little bit of lime juice just to get any extra rankness or freshness out of the meat. So Auntie Chandra is adding on all of that lime juice and we're just going to give it a quick rinse and allow it to drain again. While Auntie Chandra is giving that meat a quick rinse again with the lime juice, I'm going to go ahead and blend up the garlic, the hot pepper, as well as this culantro with a little bit of water. Alright, so we went ahead and we washed out all of our meat again with a little bit more lime juice, and then when we blended up all of our seasonings, the garlic, the hot pepper, as well as that culantro, we mixed about a tablespoon or two on top of that meat. And you're going to allow it to marinate for about 30 minutes to an hour, it really doesn't need that long. And at this point, we're going to start mixing together all of our spices. So, in our bowl here, we have our curry powder, the masala, as well as the ground jeera. And Auntie Chandra added a little bit of water to it just to make a nice thick paste. And then we're going to get started with cooking our curry. In a large heavy bottom pot, we've had some oil heating up on a medium high heat. And at this point, we're going in with some sliced onions. Now I forgot to mention these in the beginning of the video, but don't forget all of the ingredients and the proper measurements will be in the description box down below. And that for, goes for every single video. After about two minutes of those onions frying and getting a little golden brown, we're going to go in with half of our seasoning mixture, which is the culantro, the garlic, as well as those hot peppers. We're going to allow this to fry up for just about a minute until you smell all of that and it becomes very fragrant. Once this mixture has fried up for about a minute or two, it's time to go in with that paste that you made of your masala, your ground jeera, and your curry powder. We just added in the other half of those seasonings that we had. Auntie Chandra likes to add in half in the beginning, and she likes to add in the other half once the curry is cooked for a little bit. That's just because she finds that it adds layers of flavor and it makes the dish much tastier in the end. So just like with any curry I make, we like to cook the curry mixture of that paste for about 5-6 to six minutes or just until you see it starts to catch a little bit at the bottom and once you see all that oil begin to separate from the spice mixture again. At this point, we're going to start going in with all of our pertoni. You want to make sure to drain it pretty well because you don't want any extra rank liquid to go inside your food. 
We're just going to pour it all in and we're going to give it a quick mix and then I'll show you guys what to do after. Once you put your pachoni inside the pot, you want to add some salt. And this is just salt to taste. And if you're scared about adding too much salt, you can add in a little bit now and you can always taste later. You want to make sure to mix up salt into the pachoni and the spice mixture really well. So this way all of those little pieces of meat will get coated inside of that beautiful spice mixture. What we're going to do is allow this mixture to bunge or fry down until all of the meat has released its liquids. And then those liquids have dried back up. And that's going to take anywhere from about 10 to 15 minutes. And then after that, we'll show you guys what to do next. So it took about 10 minutes for us for our meat to properly bunge down and get nice and dry. The way you're going to know that it gets dry again is once all of that water is gone and it starts to catch just a little bit. You're going to start to hear a little crackly sound as well. That's how you know it's just the oil frying the actual meat at the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and add in some water. We're going to add a good amount of water to cover the meat. So this way, the all of the organs can boil properly. That water that I added, you want to make sure it covers the meat so this way it can cook properly. So the last step is adding in the scallions. This has been cooking for about an hour to an hour and a half. It's going to depend on the amount of water that you add. But once it dries down like this and it has a very, very thick gravy that clings to it, you know it's done. So we added in the scallions. Auntie Chandra just gave it a quick taste for salt and it is perfect. You can adjust the pepper as well here. If you want it more spicy, go ahead and cut in a few peppers. And that's pretty much it.